Good evening and welcome. Tonight we'll be going over the history and geography of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which as you can tell we're going to start off on the tablet so I can show you all the little details of its geography and then we'll go over its history. And for that portion, I'll show you the really nice map of St. Vincent I have in my atlas, but it doesn't have the grenadines in there, so I really want to show you the grenadines. So, to start off, St. Vincent and the grenadines is located in the Caribbean. Let me zoom way out so you can see where we are in the world. There we go. So you can see, you know, Cuba, Hispaniola is over here, Puerto Rico, and then we enter an area known as the Windward Islands. And there is this section of the Windward Islands known as the Lesser Antilles, and that's where we are tonight. So this big island's obviously St. Vincent, and down here are all the grenadines. So we're actually going to go um, south to north, I suppose, so I can show you all of the islands. So let's start off way down here. So this island here is Kariaku. It is part of Grenada, which is just down here. And then to the north of St. Vincent is St. Lucia. So those are its nearest neighbors. And then Barbados is just over that way. So let's start off over here with the tiny little petite St. Vincent, as opposed to the big St. Vincent. This island, like many islands in the Grenadines, is privately owned, and you can really see lots of very fancy ships out in the harbor on a lot of these islands. You'll definitely be able to tell which ones are the privately owned ones, just based on that. This is Union Island. We're going to mention it briefly in its history. It is not a privately owned island. It just has regular folk live in their regular lives on it. There is a little bit of resorty to it to the north. There's a little airport right here. And um, there are many saltwater lagoons on lots of these islands as well. It's the only real kind of like natural body of water on these islands. There's no actual lakes. Well, you'll see in a second. And no actual rivers, but Again, you'll see in a second. And as you can tell, these islands are very, very rocky and very mountainous. They are um, volcanic islands. Happy Island down here is a man-made island, actually. And let me see where we're going next. Who are you? This is... Oh, Palm Island. Um another privately owned island. It's owned by a resort company, as most of these islands are. This is Mayro, which is, you can see this big salt pond here, and um, this very quaint little village, which apparently doesn't even have a name, it's so quaint. And um, as you can see, this is a good example. Many of these islands are very sparsely populated in that you know, this is where the people live, and then there's some over here, and the rest is literally just trees and rocks and, um, you know, things like that. It's very, very, um, still very forested on a lot of these islands. Over here, I make sure I have the right place, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. I want to show you the... Oh, I lost it. Oh, here it is. Tobago Keys Marine Park. There we go. So all of these islands you see here are uninhabited. They are all reserve islands. And then the marine park here is like a, as you can tell, a scuba diver's paradise, right? There's lots of turtles and coral and all those wonderful, you know, Caribbean things in the water here. So that's what this little corner is for. Which island's that? It looks very uninhabited. Catholic Island. Very aptly named, I suppose. Um, and this is another privately owned island. It's a resort island for, um, as you can, you can see, all the golf courses. 
<laughs> it's a private island for very rich people to go on vacation, as well as Mustique. Another privately owned by a resort company. You can see their little lagoon there. But, um, you know, there are locals that live here, but they, they live here to work on the resort. And, yeah, this is all owned by one resort company. They get to control the whole island. And this is my favorite thing. I want to show you guys. You see Rabbit Island? Do you see, like, the... It's a plane. <laughs> anyway. At least I see it. <laughs> I think that's what it was named after. Some more little tiny uninhabited rocks out here that are part of the Grenadine Islands. And I should say that um, Kerry Koo and the other islands in Grenada are also part of the Grenadine Islands, but they're not part of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Here are some other um, no longer inhabited islands. They were once upon a time. Look how rocky this one is. We'll talk about that in its history. I don't want to get lost in the ocean here with you guys. Oh, we're so close. There we go. So on to the biggest island in the Grenadines. This is Bekoy, which that's how you pronounce that, Bekoy. And um, it is not privately owned. There's its own little cities here, and um, but as you can see, <laughs> Many rich tourists are here in their yachts and ships and things and um, Yeah, it's and even though it is like a very heavily populated island for the Grenadines at least um, There's still lots of untouched spots still lots of green and forest and it's all very lush out here, isn't it? Over here's a turtle sanctuary Where you can see some sweet rescued turtles where are they? They're at the very end of this little slideshow. But um, it's mainly a, a tourist spot, apparently, so that tourists can come and see some little turtles. Here we go. <laughs> and some sweet little baby turtles. Baby, baby turtles. Okay. There we go. And then we move on to the main attraction. St. Vincent, which as you can see is definitely the biggest island. Over here is the capital city of Kingstown. As you can see down here, that's where all the cruise ships dock. And 90% of the population of St. Vincent and the Grenadines lives on St. Vincent. It is definitely, as you can see, the most populous island by far. Argyle International is the airport you would fly into if you were coming on vacation. So, kind of the other end of the island, but it's just what it is. Mesopotamia aptly named because it's a farming community. Isn't that perfect? And the most prominent feature is this guy right here. Let me... Boom, boom, boom. There we go. So this is La Soufre, a big volcano. And it's a very big, boomy, boomy volcano. It erupted, the last eruption I should say was in 2021. And it's erupted many times since then, causing lots of destruction. And you can really see some of the old scars of past eruptions right here. Nobody lives here, obviously, because it's kind of in the destruction zone. Wallaboo, very interestingly, over here, since it's still very, um, you know, lush and mostly untouched, they film some of the Pirates of the Caribbean movie here. Movies, I should say. But anyway, Big Boomy Volcano is over here. And there are people who live on this end near the volcano, but not very many because whenever this big guy erupts here, they all have to evacuate, which we're going to talk about in its history because the 2021 eruption was pretty chaotic. They, they're still trying to like deal with recovering from that because it was a big, big boom. So, yeah. The botanical gardens are apparently like the biggest point of pride for locals that they want the tourists to see because it's very, you know, you can obviously tell that this was a British-owned colony based on the names and places like this, you know. 
very British looking, but that's not a bad thing. It's still very beautiful. So there we go. I'm going to switch you out to the atlas so I could show you some, some, I can show you the river, the main river, because you can't see it on here because it's shrouded in all of these trees and things. And I should mention the only lake is the crater lake in the volcano, which is just collected rainwater and stuff. So it's not really like a real lake. Plus whenever it erupts, you know, goodbye lake. So it doesn't really count, but then it kind of does. So anyway, let's zoom out of Google Earth here. Now that you've had a grand tour of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I went too far, there's Grenada. There's Grenada, there's St. Lucia, Martinique, but anyway. All right, so here you can see St. Vincent and a little bit of Bequay and the turtle sanctuary, very important. So up here is the big, boomy, La Soufre volcano and the only river. Well, there, there's a few, but this is the biggest one. Right over here, Culinary which these little waterways are formed by the rain flowing down from the tops of the mountains. So, you know, not permanent rivers, but when they are there, they make some really beautiful waterfalls and things. So let's get into the history of this very interesting country. There have been people living here for a long time. There's some really ancient, um, like stone art from the earliest peoples who lived on St. Vincent. The Siboney people lived here, and also the Arawak, and the Kalinago people, pretty much like a who's who of the native Caribbeans. And then eventually the Caribs moved in, and if you've seen any of my other Caribbean countries in this series, the Caribs were very violent. They really meant business. They were there to fight. So, you know, once the Caribs come to your island, you, like, you run away or give up. Because they're very tough people, as you're also about to find out. Christopher Columbus sailed by in 1498, named it St. Vincent, since it was St. Vincent's Saint's Day that day. And, you know, the, the Caribs are here, right? So when the Europeans tried to come by, the Caribs fought back in such a brutal way that, you know, the French came by, they got beat out, the English came by, the Dutch came by, the the Caribs fought them off very violently, so. Um, these, oh, can you see? The two little islands I mentioned, Batoya and Bala. So, remember I, I mentioned them and they're uninhabited now. So pretty much these islands were controlled by the Carib peoples and they fought off people like crazy. So St. Lucia's just up there. Grenada's just down there. St. Lucia had a very messy back and forth between the French and the English. And Grenada was owned by the French for a very long time until it was conquered by the English. So on those two islands, there was a lot of slavery happening. Slave labor on plantations for things like sugar. And when these slaves would escape, they would head out to the Grenadines. And they'd meet up with the Caribs and they would get married and have babies and started a new, essentially a new race of people who are known as the Garifuna, or the, the English called them the Black Caribs, which kind of an appropriate name because they, they were a mixture of black and Carib, so it kind of worked out. But anyway, the Garifuna people lived on these islands and they were also, just like their ancestors, excessively violent. If anyone tried to come and start a plantation here, they would be fought off very violently. So settlement didn't really happen for a long time compared to the history of the Caribbean. The French managed to establish the first town, which was this one right here, which believe it or not today is pronounced Barali. It's not at all how that would be pronounced in French, but you know, there's Creole here on this island, and they pronounce things slightly differently from regular French. So this town was established in 1719, and it was, uh, you know, they, they built plantations and things like that, so it was not, you know, the, the Garifuna are obviously not pleased, but they, the French weren't, you know, 
being horrifying to them, they were just kind of letting them be. Until the British came and captured the island during the Seven Years' War. They were fighting with France. That's that's when they went after St. Lucia and Grenada as well. The um, Garifuna were not pleased about this, especially in 1763 when the Treaty of Paris allowed the British to keep St. Vincent and the Grenadines for themselves. And they started to build forts and loads of plantations and bringing in loads and loads of slaves. And the first Carib War occurred from 1772 to 1773, basically the Garifuna trying to fight back the, the British and uh, eventually lost. The French took the island back in 1779, but after the death settled from those skirmishes at the Treaty of Versailles in 1783, the British were awarded the island back and thus sparked the Second Carib War from 1795 to 1796. This one was pretty bad, and the Garifuna got beaten pretty bad, and they were exiled. Um, they were sent to some of the more, you know, they were removed from these islands, which is why they're uninhabited now. So these islands down here, they were um, exiled mainly to Belize, which we discussed the Garifuna people in my Belize episode, and also to some islands off of Honduras, and um, various other little Grenadine islands, but yeah, they were kicked out after that war and became totally owned by the British, who brought in, you know, more slaves, built more plantations until slavery was outlawed. Um, it eventually ended by 1838, and in order to work all these plantations, they brought in indentured servants, mainly from poor European areas and from India. The area was made a crown colony in 1877. They were allowed to form their first legislative council in 1925, starting to make some of their own rules. And in the 1960s, it became part of what was known as the West Indies Federation, which basically Great Britain tried to lump all the islands in the Caribbean that they owned into one unit. So like um, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Barbados, and so on. And, and, like 20 islands, right? Um, but that fell apart by 1962. It was just a little too ambitious, I think. But the island was granted their independence on October 27th, 1979, and they remained part of the Commonwealth. The only bumpy part was Union Island, which I showed you. It was down south near Grenada. They wanted to cede from this new country and join Grenada because they felt closer to the Grenadians than the um, people of St. Vincent, St. Vincentians. I forgot. Anyway, um, so there was a bit of an uprising, but it got squashed and the uprising failed. And they're still part of St. Vincent and the Grenadines today. And essentially, the only real big issues to come out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines are environmental ones in that they are right in the hurricane belt, so they've got walloped by a couple of hurricanes in its time. And then this guy, Le Souffre, the volcano, it had a huge eruption in 1902. That one was the deadliest one by far. It erupted again the year of their independence in 1979, and then, like I said, it erupted in 2021 which was, you know, during the COVID-19 pandemic. So people were being evacuated from this corner of the island and COVID started to spread around their evacuation center. So it became a crisis within a crisis in a way. And um, they got a lot of aid, thankfully, from many other island nations nearby and some other European countries and I believe America as well. And a lot of cruise ships came in to take people off the island and send them to safer places while the volcano cooled down. And um, the only real other interesting thing I think politically is that the current prime minister, his name is Ralph Gonsalves, um, he's very like left-leaning, and he's trying to push various European nations to get reparations for slavery. But anyway, that's going to be it for tonight. That is the history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines which I think is a really neat place. Um, very exclusive, apparently. Like, some of these islands, the private ones, you have to be, like, crazy rich to own a property on or have a vacation on. So it's very luxurious. And 
like I said, very forested and thick and jungly still. It's not a totally developed place, and people here are very proud of that. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night. Good night. Good night.